In the Okavango Delta, in the wild and silent expanse, Thandi felt free. Making her way through the dense forest and admiring the exuberance around her, she followed her own rhythm, capturing the details of nature as if they were confidences revealed in whispers. It was the trip of a lifetime, an adventure she had dreamed of doing on her own, fully trusting in her skills as an explorer. The local guides insisted on accompanying her, but Thandi was determined. I know nature, I know how it works, she said with a firm smile. As the sun slanted towards the horizon, she chose a spot near a stream, where the trees provided shade and the sound of running water soothed her soul. After setting up her camp, she watched the peaceful flow of the river and, with an empty bottle in hand, went to the bank to get some water. Her bare feet stepped on the stones, which seemed safe in the golden reflection of the sun. Thandi crouched down, immersed in the moment, when a green, mossy stone caught her eye. It was larger, with a flat surface, and seemed perfect for leaning on while she filled her bottle. But as she stepped on it, she felt the immediate danger. The surface was treacherously slippery. Time slowed down, and before she could react, her body was thrown forward. Thandi plummeted into the cold water, and the current, which had seemed so calm before, now revealed its true strength. The water enveloped her, icy and relentless, pulling her down violently. Thandi struggled to keep her head above the surface, moving her arms and legs with all her might. No, I... I can get out of here. I just need to swim back, she muttered to herself between chokes, trying to stay calm. But the force of the river was overwhelming, and every attempt to swim only seemed to push her further away from the shore. Her heart was racing, and adrenaline was coursing through her veins. Little by little, despair was replaced by a rising wave of panic. The shore, which had once been so close, was now just a blurry, almost indistinguishable image. Is this how it ends? She asked herself in the midst of the maelstrom, feeling helpless for the first time against the overwhelming force of nature. Thandi had always prided herself on her ability to survive in the jungle, but at that moment, everything she knew seemed useless. She struggled against the current, but her strength was beginning to run out, the current was dragging Thandi with a fury that seemed impossible to overcome. Her strength, which had once seemed unshakable, was now draining away with every movement. In the midst of the swirling waters, her mind began to wander, in a mixture of dread and regret. Why did I insist on coming alone? she thought, her heart racing and her arms getting heavier by the second. The guides warned me, but I, conceited and reckless, thought I could face all this alone. Her regret grew as the river's edge became more and more distant. It was just her and the river, in an unequal battle that gradually sapped her energy and will to fight. The fear of loneliness, something she had never felt before, was now overwhelming. The silence around her only intensified her vulnerability. For a moment she closed her eyes trying to regain control, but reality was relentless. Desperate, Thandi finally gave in to the only thing she had left, screaming. Help me! The voice, hoarse and flawed, was lost in the echo of the water. Not knowing who might hear, or if anyone would, she screamed once more, with all the strength left in her lungs. Someone, please. The silence remained absolute. Thandi knew deep down that it was unlikely that anyone was nearby, but her instinct for survival made her cling to any glimmer of hope. She closed her eyes, and tears mixed with the water around her. Each breath was a painful effort. When her strength seemed to be on the verge of running out completely, her trembling fingers touched something floating in the water. It was a log, old and covered in moss, but firm enough to support her for a brief moment. With a last gasp of energy, Thandi clung to it, feeling the weight of her body pressing against the rough wood. She rested her face on it, breathing hard, and the world around her finally seemed to slow down. For a moment, she could only see the distant shores, blurred and unreachable, 
Still clinging to the log that floated precariously in the current, Thandi tried to steady her breathing. The cold of the water made her body shiver, while the relentless force of the current strained every muscle. She didn't know how long she could hold on. Her torso creaked with every movement, as if it were about to give way. It was then that she caught a glimpse of something on the banks. In the middle of the dense vegetation, a huge figure seemed to be watching her. Thandi blinked, trying to focus her eyes. What was it? It seemed too big to be one of the common animals that inhabited the area. Her mind was still scrambled by adrenaline and, for a moment, she thought she might be hallucinating. But it wasn't a hallucination. A gorilla, huge and imposing, emerged from the shade of the trees, watching her every move with deep, inquisitive eyes. It stood still, and Thandi, exhausted though she was, felt a chill run down her spine as she realized the intensity of its gaze. The gorilla didn't seem threatening, but his presence was frightening. In silence, he seemed to ponder, as if he understood Thandi's desperation. The log under her arms snapped, and Thandi gasped in despair as she saw a piece of wood come loose and be carried away by the current. Every second counted, and now she knew she had no time to lose. Please, she whispered, almost voiceless, her eyes glued to the gorilla staring at her from the shore. She didn't know if he understood her, or even if his presence was a sign of something good, but she was out of options. To her surprise, the gorilla tilted his head slightly as if he recognized the desperation in her eyes. But the time for reactions was running out, and the wood creaked again, this time with even greater force. Panic seized Thandi as the log finally broke, and her body began to slide back down the relentless current, further and further from the shore. What she hadn't imagined was that, at that moment, the gorilla would make a decision— a decision that would change everything. The cold of the water now seemed like a final sentence. Thandi felt at the mercy of the current, without the strength to resist, when suddenly a colossal shadow cut across the surface of the river. The gorilla launched itself into the water, its powerful paws snapping towards her, making space against the current with unbelievable force. It was a sight as surprising as it was terrifying. Before Thandi could understand what was happening, the gorilla grabbed her firmly by the collar of her clothes, pulling her towards him. In shock, she pursed her lips, but she was too weak to question, without the strength to fight. The creature's proximity was intimidating. She could feel the animal's heavy breathing and the rough touch of its wet fur on her skin. The gorilla held her with determination, as if it were something it already knew how to do, and its eyes fixed on the shore indicated that it had a single goal, to take her out of that nightmare. The gorilla's arms wrapped around her with an unexpectedly delicate firmness as he swam against the force of the current. With each stroke, Thandi could feel the tension in the gorilla's muscles. He was using his whole body, every targeted thrust, every precise movement, it seemed that nature had sculpted him to face even the most impossible challenges. The current tried to drag them away, but the gorilla refused to give in, advancing little by little, without hesitation. Time seemed to stretch out. The whole world was reduced to the sound of their panting breaths, the rapid beating of Thandi's heart, and the sound of the surrounding water. When they finally touched the bottom of the river near the bank, the gorilla planted himself on the ground with a final push and dragged Thandi onto dry land. Still unable to believe what had happened, Thandi lay on the bank, gasping for breath. She looked at the gorilla, and for a moment, their eyes met. It was as if he was silently checking that she was safe. His expression was indecipherable, but it carried a deep, almost protective calm. And then, without making a sound, the gorilla turned and walked slowly away, disappearing into the shadows of the forest. Thandi lay on the bank in silence, the tears streaming down her face mixed with relief and shock. She tried to comprehend what had just happened, but could only feel intense gratitude for her unlikely savior. Thandi lay on the shore, her body heavy and exhausted, 
Her heart was still racing as if danger was lurking. She tried to get up, but every movement required an effort that her body could barely bear. Gasping for breath, she looked again at the forest, where the gorilla had disappeared moments ago. Before she could organize her thoughts, she heard voices in the distance. Is there someone over there? asked a male voice, full of surprise. I saw someone, they seemed to be down. Another voice, closer, replied urgently. Soon, two hikers appeared in the clearing. Seeing Thandy standing there, wet, wide-eyed, and in shock, they rushed over to her. My God, are you all right? What happened? asked a dark-haired woman as she bent down next to Thandy. Thandy was still in a state of lethargy, trying to process the sudden help. The images of the gorilla pulling her against the current swirled in her mind like a dream too vivid to ignore. I... Her voice came out weak. I was... Saved by a... A gorilla. The woman and the man exchanged quick glances of disbelief, but the woman put her hand on Thandi's shoulder, trying to be understanding. Calm down. You're in shock. We'll help you out of here first, then you can tell us everything, okay? While the woman got Thandi a bottle of water, the man opened his backpack, taking out a blanket to wrap around her and keep her warm. Did you really say you were... Saved by a gorilla? Asked the man, trying to keep his tone serious, but with a mixture of surprise and skepticism. Thandi looked at him, still with a haunted expression. I know it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. I was sinking. I was going to die. Then he appeared, grabbed me, and brought me to shore. The woman nodded, trying to comfort her, but there was something in her gaze that made it clear she didn't believe her. It's okay, Thandi. You've had a big scare. Sometimes our minds create things to protect us from trauma. Thandi frowned in an expression of disappointment and frustration, but she was too weak to argue. They helped her to her feet and walk a few steps to a safer area, where she could finally rest, still lost between the memories of the rescue and the incredulity of those around her. As she took one last look at the dense forest, she muttered to herself, feeling a strange sense of gratitude and sadness. I know what I saw. I know who saved me. After her rescue, Thandi was taken to a local hospital, where doctors monitored her vital signs and tended to the scratches the cruel river had left on her skin. The hours she had spent in the water and the effort to stay alive had exhausted her strength, and she could barely stay awake. But what kept her alert were the memories of what she had experienced and the unlikely rescue. A doctor approached, assessing her alertness. How are you feeling? He asked, offering her a glass of water. I'm... Fine, I guess, replied Thandi, before correcting herself. I mean, my body is exhausted, but my mind is trying to understand what I've been through. She looked at the doctor, hesitating but feeling the need to tell him what was haunting her. I know it sounds impossible, but... I was saved by a gorilla, she said, waiting for a reaction. He was there, on the shore, watching me. And then... He entered the water and brought me to shore. The doctor stared at her for a long moment, his lips pressed together in an expression that was difficult to decipher. He leaned towards her, looking professional but skeptical at the same time. Thandi, you've been through a situation of extreme stress and lack of oxygen. It's common for the mind to create imaginary scenarios to deal with the trauma, he explained, his tone careful but firm. She tried to insist, her eyes shining with frustration. It wasn't imagination, doctor. I felt... I felt his breath, his touch... I saw the look in his eyes. It was real. The doctor shook his head, a slightly condescending smile on his lips. It's natural for you to believe it was real, Thandi, but the brain, under stress, can trick us. Think of it as a form of protection. Incredulous, Thandi realized that no one would take her seriously. Every time she told them what she had experienced, she heard the same explanation— an attempt to rationalize what she knew to be real. 
Even so, she decided she wouldn't insist any longer. That experience belonged to her, and she would give herself the right to believe it. A few days later, when she had recovered, Thandi returned home with a lighter body, but a mind full of memories. She knew that people would see her as someone who had succumbed to delirium, but she held in her heart the certainty of what had really happened. As she gazed at the horizon, where the river meandered through the African landscape, she whispered, almost like a promise, I will never forget you. In that instant, Thandi realized that that day, the Okavango Delta had not only shown her its dangers, but also its mysteries. The impossible she had experienced would be the memory of an unlikely guardian and a reverence she would forever treasure.